so long. On top, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Check it, check it. This unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nah, nah, you know Modell. Wait, what about no Modell? What's up? Shut up. You can't do it like I do. Don't try. Check it, man. Hey, man. We here today. We got very special guest we out here in los angeles man california yeah hey man we we finding the best i'm hanging with the rest of them mm -hmm. yeah we hanging with the rest of them man my boy mark lamont is in the building what's going on man what's going on folks man hey man uh crept up on him man you know what i'm saying crept up on him mm -hmm. uh, you know what i'm saying got him what's going yeah. on yeah. <laughs> so man good to have you on the show man good to be here man so we want to know about we want our audience to know who mark lamont is so you got to dig deep down, you know, tell okay. us about your history. Tell us about where you're from, how you were raised, the whole work. So go ahead. So I am Mark Lamont, the R&B singer, sensation, extraordinaire, whatever you want to call it. Boy, that's <laughs> different right there when they start giving them bars like that. The R&B sensation, uh, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing this, man. I do this. I mean, that boy I, say the R&B sensation. I see. What isn't it? That's a lot of that. So R and B sensation. From what? where? From Compton, California. Oh Compton. man, these boys. Compton. Oh, Bumpton? Yeah. Compton. Oh, see, he oh, ain't he no banger. Not, <laughs> he ain't no banger at all. I'm Compton. not in it at all yeah. like that. Yeah. How did you come up and come? I gotta say this, man. I, I always try to figure out how because you hear the stories. Right. Like what well, how, how, how give me an uh, understanding of how you how is it to come up in Compton? But but be able to say it's Compton instead of Bompton, uh, meaning not being the you know the way things are rolling in, in, right. the, in that lifestyle. Well, my mom and my dad both from Compton. Mm -hmm. um, two separate sides of Compton, but uh, I have a lot of family on my dad's side that was law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, it wasn't none of that mm -hmm. going on. Oh. You know, my grandfather, my uncles, all. Compton PD. How did you not end up with Compton PD? I was just about PD? to ask the same thing. Uh, uh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. Did so, any of your siblings end up doing it? My brother is actually a cop, but he's See. in Vegas. Oh, okay. But yeah. He, is he? Yeah. My Damn. little brother. He, so are you the oldest? Into I'm the oldest. Only me and, me and him. Oh, okay. One and two. Oh. So we 11 How far years apart. apart? 11 years. I was by myself mm. doing my dirt. <laughs> it was, Eleven years, and when he came, it stole your shine. He was yeah. running the street. I mean, I was run. Yeah, I was I, literally stole your shine. Well, you know, I was ready to give it up by then. I didn't care. But here's the thing: so we don't have the same dad. So okay. I was still my dad's only child. Okay, I got it. So your dad and your mom weren't together. No, they were raising you as co-parenting, but they weren't right. together. I was a, a high school love child, and you know, so how, young. how did that feel not having them in the same household? <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, <why? laughs> you played them against each other. <laughs> yeah. That was bad. He was bad. It didn't work. No, because they were my my parents were still friends up until the day he passed. I lost. This is Man, this making a ten years son mm. for my dad's wow. window. So was were you it, one of those? Sorry, was were you one of those child that would um like when the step parents came in be like you not my mom or you not my daddy? Nah, no, nah, I wasn't. I wasn't like that at all. Mm. Um, you know, I gave respect. I, I was brought up to to respect. Oh, okay. Was it was it on duty that he passed away? No, my dad. No, my dad actually was a part of a motorcycle club, rare breed. Oh, okay. And it happened at one of their annual runs. He wasn't even supposed to go. Wow. He just went out there, and from the stories I got, he was in Fresno. Um, he had the time of his life. He was dancing all night, partying. You know just relax he was my dad was a, a people person mm -hmm. he was a fun guy to be around everybody loved my dad how old was he 46 young 46 years old so i was 29 at the time he passed and it was on a motorcycle accident no it wasn't he it was so he was supposed to come home uh i want to say either that monday or later that sunday evening 
um, when he went back after the party had, you know, the, the dance function went right. shut down. He went back to his hotel room, and he ended up having a seizure that he never came out of. Wow. So he basically just ended up, Was he? had he ever had a seizure before? Right. Nope. Not to my knowledge. Wow. Nope. And they knew that's what, the doc, that's what they labeled it as a seizure. Yeah. Was no. it something maybe well, that he it took? Went, it went, no. He, uh... Now, he dealt with high blood pressure and stuff like mm. that, um, and he was taking medication for it, but I guess all that hype wore him down, him. you know? So, yeah. um, and he partied like his last. It, it was, it's so crazy how you hear stories. Party uh, like his last. Like, yeah, people saying they did this and this and this up until right. they passed, right? And the way he was moving that whole week, I spent that whole week with him. And the way he was moving, the way he was doing things, the like conversations normal. we had, definitely wasn't normal. Mm. Wasn't normal. Wasn't normal. But I didn't put two and two together. Because yeah. you think. But you would never know. You, you even know. You're just thinking he's living his best life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it was like, but he, he called me. I'll I never forget. He said, hey, you know, we need to start doing more stuff. Together. Together. Why don't you come over here tomorrow? We'll get on the computer and look up some stuff. We were planning our 2013 together. Like, we, we had stuff planned that we was going to do. So we picked out, yeah, we're going to go here, we're going to go here, do this, do that. And uh, didn't get a How did that affect you, though? It hurt. Because my, my pops was, that was my, that was my dog. Like, I can imagine. I used to call off work. We would play dominoes from sunup to sundown. I'm a <laughs> domino player. So oh, hell. I'm a here domino player. I'm the domino guy. Man, you ask not want to get me. I, I, I saw a pack of dominoes. You want to get your ass? Hold on, hold on. I saw a pack of dominoes over there. We'll take you on anytime. I will play as soon as we Ooh. cut these mics off. <laughs> now, listen. E40 was about to be late to a concert, losing to me. <laughs> I kid you not. Whooped him. What? What? what, what how you end ass. up? Matter of fact, how did you end up even dealing with E40? I think that's a good. That's a good so, question. My dad, again, um, he had a catering business. Him and his buddies, one of his buddies is like my uncle. They grew up together. Actually, my, he's the one that was in the delivery room when I was born. Mm. But he uh, had this big function, and one of my dad's friends and his buddy's friends, uh, Inglewood Muggs, mm -hmm. came down and brought 40 with him. My dad called me, hey, uh, you might want to come over here. He's like, he's 40 up here. I'm like, man, he's 40 in uh, Compton. He was like, I'm telling you, get up here. I said, all right. So I went, and sure enough, 40 was there. I got a picture I'll show y'all of me and him playing dominoes, his security sitting around. And when I tell you E40, I think I beat E40 about nine times straight before he won. No. And he says, <laughs> kid you not, so... You made him win that last one. Had wow. to. So, <laughs> so he had a concert going on back in the day. It was a club called V2O in Long Beach. He was doing a show there. And this is at the time that uh, he just dropped his revenue retrieving double album. Uh, bitch had not hit the air yet. But out here, we loved him. It was like, oh, him and Too Short got one. It's, and I, I told him, I said, man. You just dropped this album. I said, I know what your single is right now. I said, but bitch, that's, that got to be your next single. I said, it's going out here. He was like, you, you think so? I said, trust me. So we playing. He said, man, I got to get to this show. He was like, I got to go to the show in Long Beach. He said, you want to go? And I had my other boy with me. I said, man, yeah, I want to go. <laughs> he was like, all right, cool. He said, take my number put my number he put his number in my phone he said I gotta go to the hotel change up meet me over there I said alright cool so we go get changed and as I'm we're pulling up in this back alleyway security was like y'all can't be back here I'm like nah we meet E40 up here they was like E40 already went in and I'm like what I know he didn't just do me like that right? he probably didn't know man he said, no, he 40, and he asked another guy, he was like, didn't he 40 already go? He was like, yeah. I said, man. I said, all right. So we turn around, and I'm calling 40, and he not picking up. 
two minutes later, my phone rings. It's 40. He was like, hey. He was like, y'all up there? I said, yeah. I said, they said you already went in. He was like, man, we ain't there yet. He was like, we coming down right now. I turn around and a van is pulling down. He was like, is that y'all two in the alley? I said, yeah. He was like, this us right here. He said, come on back. Man, I get there. We go inside and Busy Bone or Lazy Bone from lazy. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Lazy, yeah. He was back in the green room. <laughs> and E-40 introduced me. He goes, man, he was like, this motherfucker right here is the luckiest nigga I ever met on Domino. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, but he, he, it was all love. So we go on stage and I'm with 40 on stage. The whole time. Girls in the crowd asking me, who are you? What do you do? I was like, I ain't nobody. <laughs> yeah, ain't yeah, nobody. yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So, so anyway, he's doing his songs and whatnot. Then the last song of the night was Bitch. Mm. Soon as they heard, nigga, don't act like it. The crowd went crazy. crazy. And he looked over at me and he just grabbed and put his arm around me. He rocking, rocking, rocking doing he I was like, You told him that was I it. I told him. I told him. And we uh we stayed cool, man. A memorable we, uh, night. Were you singing yeah. at this time? Were you singing at this I time? I was I was singing, but I didn't mention like much to him because I'm like right, I know he gets a, bombarded with yeah. people trying to get on and I'm the type of person if I meet somebody in the industry I don't want to bombard you I want you to be regular around me I want you to feel comfortable yeah, I want to be yeah. like man it's, that's how I end up making a lot of relationships that I have yeah you built them yeah it's like man I know stuff about certain people or been places with certain people and I don't always talk about it it's because we have that that relationship where you ain't Wow. Be like, man, so, so um, yeah, let's talk about some of those relationships. Uh, <laughs> uh, who, who is somebody else that sticks out to you when you like, like a, like a E forty uh, that you've spent time with? Uh, Tank. Forward twist. Tank. Tank. I just was with T Rail. T Rail redid so, redid that dang that I deserve. Yeah. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah. A Tank Tank matter of fact was in Kansas with him. So you you um. You and Tank, Tank, can you all sing Tank? Let's be real. No, um, <laughs> He's I'm, I'm not. I'm not even gonna do that. I'm not yeah, gonna. Do you knew you could. I, I look up. Yeah, you look up to him. I look up to this dude. He's he's a tremendous. How did y'all meet? My first time actually meeting Tank was so I did my first album. Um, my first album was labeled First Impression. How old were you at that time? This is actually right after my dad. Oh dang, that's heavy. So God put you put him in your life right after that. Yeah. Wow. Like that album happened because my dad was on my ass. At the time I had four songs recorded before my dad passed. And me and Keith Stewart, we worked on all of that music beforehand. Right? I had no I had zero songs by myself until me and Keith started doing music together. Mm -hmm. Right? And Keith was Pinning these songs, and I'm adding in little parts, whatever. And some songs I ain't do nothing to, just Keith already had them ready. And I'm like, man, I want to record that. He was like, yeah, all right. He'd say, I got one for you. My dad used to play it on this Harley motorcycle, and he knew all the lyrics. Like, he was the one that recorded these songs, Aww. right? But my dad told me the week before, he, the week he passed, he said, you know what? You need to get off your ass and start doing your music. These are his words, verbatim. You need to get off your ass, start doing your music. I want you to get a band together. I got so many different connections, and there's so many things you could be doing. I could plug you with. My dad was, he was Cat Williams' bodyguard. Uh, you know, so I got a chance to be with Cat. Cat, actually, shout out to Cat Williams. Um, he was one of the first people that came down to see me after my dad. Pass. He wow. came and visited me. How long was he the bodyguard for Cat Williams? Ooh, a few years. Okay. A few years. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. Cat that's Williams, why your daddy said he could plug in with so many people because he had he the connections. So, listen, when I got into this industry, find like fully got in and meeting different people, so many people knew my dad. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, and I'm like, hey, what's your dad's name? His name was Terry. Terry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He used to take. He was talking to Keith about uh, Jamie Foxx. Mm -hmm. My dad used to take his uh, 
my dad had a lot of horses. And he had a Shetland pony that he mm. used to take down to Jamie Foxx's house for his daughter's birthday mm -hmm. uh, for Corinne mm -hmm. when she would have a party. Right. And Jamie would always call him, hey, we having a party up here. Can you bring that horse? And they used to trip off the horse because the horse used to drink beer. No. <laughs> the horse was a drunk. <laughs> So <laughs> the horse was a drunk. I hope he didn't fall out one day. Yeah, he did. No, <laughs> he he did no, out. no I, I kid you not. The horse was in the driveway, walking sideways. Sideways and drunk. fell out. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, I want to ask you about Cat Williams. You don't yeah. bring that name up and then just slide right by it. That's yeah. one of the he wanted to go to when it comes to the yeah. comedy world. Yeah. Um, but he there are so many different crazy stories out there with Cat right. Williams. Which Cat Williams? I always go to the you know me. I'm phasing it in. So, was it the time uh, the time that had, when when your father passed? Was this after he had went through the situation with the boy fighting him or? With him, you know what I mean? Before. Oh, so it's before. Okay. Yeah, before. Yeah, so he was on it, on it then. On, on. Like, yeah. Man, and how is, how is Cat Williams? How, how, how is he as a person, just from your perspective? Man, great dude. Good heart. Very good heart. Very good heart. I hear that a lot about him. Very good heart. Like, so he'll give you the shirt off his back. Mm -hmm. We were sitting, so he had a show in Vegas. This is my first time meeting Cat, right? It was Cat's birthday. <clears throat> The weekend and he's doing his show and we're sitting at the slot machine I'm putting my money in slowly because I don't have that much yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't have Friday yeah. after next money so um cat sees I run out cat starts putting feed in my machine with his money now mind you me and cat sitting next to each other he playing the slot I'm playing the slot but I'm losing his money faster than I lost my money <laughs> So he gets on stage during his show and he cracks a joke about it. He was like, man, he was like, this dude out here losing my money. Pass. I'm going to have to go shoot another movie just to recoup the money that he lost. <laughs> oh, he cutting up. Yeah. He, but he was like that. On he was site. like that, man. But, man, I, I enjoy it. We, we, we got a chance to, to hang. He took me to uh, Kanye West after party. He took me to uh, DJ who was it? DJ Kid Capri's after party really? out there. We we wow. had fun. Like, man, that's what what uh, Faze on Love talked about him trying to buy him a pair of shoes. He was mm -hmm. like, "Man, I can't let you buy me a pair of shoes." <laughs> I said, "What?" That was, yeah. a, and I know it's true because you can't make that up. You know, right. <laughs> he was like, right. "Who's at the shoe store?" I'm like, "Man, I can't let this guy buy me shoes." Right. But it's just like 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 to see a person trying to really. And then Big Court said the same thing. Big Court, and they fell out, but he still said. He would give you the shirt off his back. So yeah. you hear those stories about it. Even though he had his issues, mm -hmm. he was a good, he's a good, genuine person. Very good dude. Like I say, he, he's the one that reached out when my dad passed. said, you know, I'm going to come visit. We, he came out here about midnight. We shot pool till like 2 o'clock in the morning. Just He's competitive as hell, ain't he? Oh, man. He wants to try to beat somebody in yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. That's what he does. Yeah, yeah. So... Man, so the, the singing thing, man. You know, uh, you say you can sing, but I you know, hear a yeah. There's a yeah. If I had to, if I, if you was coming in and you had to come behind Tank, mm -hmm. what, what song, song would you, you sing? sing? <laughs> and and just how, yeah, this is this acapella, of course. But what, what song would it be? And how would you sing? Mm. So it'd be something like, uh, "Don't be afraid." I promise you that I won't hurt you And lady have no fear Cause my love will keep you near And unplug the phone Cause what you come to do You will be all night long And you don't have to worry Cause you'll thank me early in the morning, girl, can we make love? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. That's it right there. Let me ask you this, man. Do you, do, like, I know you and uh, uh, my boy, man, uh, 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 you, you sound good. I, I thought about, what's the name? Uh, what's the Drew Hill and them? <laughs> <laughs> you get that a lot. I get a lot. <laughs> Drew Hill, Jack and Ed. Jack and Ed, boy, you went there, boy. Yeah. You took me somewhere, yeah. man. That's yeah. good, man. Like, so what do we do to keep R&B alive, man? It's been so Support hard, it. man. Support it. Because it's, it's, you hear a lot of people say R&B is dead. Or you, you hear a lot of people say, 
oh, well, they ain't doing this type of R&B. They are. It's just the lesser known artists that you don't fully know yet. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get them out there is to support it. Like myself, Keith Stewart, you know, got a, I got a whole conglomerate of artists that you would swear people aren't making the type of music that you've been missing that are making the type of music that you've been missing. <laughs> so um, it's just, you know, really supporting, getting the word of mouth out there. And that's it. But we're going to have to make sure we keep supporting because I love R&B. Y'all ain't the only one that do a little singing. I might go in on y'all next time we do an interview. <laughs> next uh, time I do an interview with y'all, I might just go in on y'all. I mean, you, all you R&B singers and all you uh, 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 L.A. people. I'm coming up in L.A. and I'm, I'm going to have a sing-off. The South versus L.A. sing-off with uh, ECEO. Yeah, stop playing. A boss talk versus. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of verses, who wins in a versus between uh Which one you wanna do? Usher and uh Chris Brown. Chris Brown. I gotta go back to that because there was one guy on here earlier. He had his had I wanna see where you at with it. Huh. I'm going to Usher hundred and ten percent. So you don't think Chris Brown got it like that? No, you trying to throw He me sung this girl, he sung <laughs> this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> he sung this Christmas. Yeah, that's cool, but no. Uh, <laughs> Not sure gonna they, win, some man. people say better than Michael Jackson but, but let me tell you this too I'm just saying When you get to To the verses This is another thing That's that's not always mentioned It's what you play mm -hmm. Where you play it mm -hmm. You know what I mean So if you playing If Usher goes up And he plays You don't have to call And then you come behind it With some slow stuff It's like wait a minute Yeah It's gonna have to come on with it so it all depends on the DJ. It depends, yep. Well, mm -hmm. I tell you right now, it's going to be crazy, man, because uh, we're going to get that one day. Watch what I tell you. What's, oh, the yeah. best, what's the best verses so far since they started that you've seen? To me, mm -hmm. and, and this goes back, honestly, to when it first started, uh, was the Teddy Riley. And, yeah, and I hear a lot face. of people say that. Because a lot of people weren't familiar with it. Who did these songs. Like, wait a minute, I didn't know Babyface did this, or I didn't know Teddy Riley did this. Yeah. I miss that. I miss that. But there's a verses that I, I wanted to see. Who? That they had one, but I, I felt it should have been Charlie Wilson and the Gap Band versus Ronald Isley and the Isley Brothers. I said, that would have been crazy. Yeah. It would have been really crazy. That they had their solo stuff and their group stuff, uh, and they could have just. Right. I got to ask you this, man. The top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Any genre? Uh, number one. Number one, Donny Hathaway. Mm, that's the first Donnie Hathaway we've had. Mm -hmm. Number, Number two, two, Stevie. That this boy got an old soul. Mm -hmm. Number, Number three, three, R. Kelly. Hey, this boy love Kelly, man. Kelly got to get in there, man. What do you think about R&B? You can't, you can't not say R. Kelly. You cannot. If you have a conversation of R&B music and you do not mention R. Kelly's name or Joe, please don't talk to me. Wow. Do you think it'll ever fade though? Like say the next. 20 years. Do you think they're going to still be talking about R. Kelly? Hell yeah. Where music they, is concerned? They can't get away from it. Listen. He just said Donnie Hathaway. They have to put a biopic out on this man. There, ha there has to be a biopic. No, 100. I, I agree 100%. People will just watch it because they're going to be nosy. <laughs> but look, That's it. Let, I mean, it, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that too. But you think about it. Even through all the stuff that R. Kelly's been going through, whether the naysayers say this or that, his album sales has shot up. Mm -hmm. Of course. Them streams have went up. Of course. So all that mute R. Kelly shit that they talking? It ain't happening. I went to, uh, I'm gonna say this. I was somewhere last week. I was at a bar and they put on a new R. Kelly record. People knew it was R. Kelly and they was in there. <laughs> they went crazy. And they was going crazy. So I don't want to, man, please. It ain't happening. You can't man, ban you, R. Kelly. You can't ban good music. Man. When it comes to what he does, what he, what his, his body of work. I don't, I don't you know, condone what he, he does. I don't condone that. Yeah. But I know how to separate mm -hmm. the artistry from his person. From, yeah. Check it, man. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the, on the show. Man. man, thank you for having me. Man, it's going yeah, down, man. man. Mark been in here doing his thing, man. Yes. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And we out. Hey.